All right, today we're going over section 5.5, ambiguous sign law. So this is the second part of the sign law. So this deals with situations in which we are just given measurements and we could create zero, one, or two triangles. So ambiguous case occurs when we're given a side side angle triangle. So what that means is we have a side, a side, and then an angle consecutively. When that occurs, there's a possibility of zero, one, or two triangles occurring. We get no triangles if the ratio of our opposite side over adjacent is less than sine of our angle. So essentially this would be our opposite side, this is our adjacent side. If the ratio of this side over this side is less than sine of this angle, we have no triangles. We have two triangles if the angle given is less than 90 degrees and the ratio of the opposite over adjacent is greater than the sine of our angle and also has to be less than one. So essentially, sine of our angle has to be less than our opposite over adjacent, which also has to be less than one. So if we have this situation, we will have two triangles. To calculate both triangles, we wanna find the angle opposite our longest given side using sine law and put that into the triangle with a smaller angle. In the other triangle, we can put the results of that once we subtract it from 180. From there, we'll solve each triangle independently. So our first example, solve for a triangle or triangles where y equals 29, y equal, so angle y is 29, side y is 11, and x is 20. So start drawing this out. So I have angle Y is 29 degrees. Opposite it is side Y, which is 11. And we're given another side, which is X, which is 20. So this is our opposite. This is our adjacent. So first thing I would do is calculate what sine of 29 is. Now sine of 29 is 0 0.484. And then I will calculate my opposite over adjacent. So that would be 11 over 20. So that is 0 0.55. So since this is larger than this and less than one, we have two triangles. So I'll draw out two different triangles that this could make. We could have one where this back angle goes towards the right away from where we started. We can also have one where it angles back towards where we started. We'll then label each of these triangles. So each one will have our angle Y in the same location. So therefore side length Y in the same location. So this would be 29 degrees here. This one would be 29 degrees. Our opposite side Y is 11 in each of them. And our adjacent side X is 20 on each of them. So what we'll do next is we will solve for this angle here, angle X. And then we'll call this other one for this one, we'll call this Z and side Z. So if we're solving for angle X, that would be sine of angle X over side length X. And then we have our values for Y. So equals 
sine of y over y. Rearranging this gives us sine of x is equal to side length x times sine of y over side length y. So we have sine of x is equal to 20 sine of 29 divided by side length 11. And that gives us sine x is equal to 0 0.8815. So to get x, we'll now go x is equal to sine negative 1 of 0 0.8815. And that gives us 62 degrees. Now, in this triangle, it looks like that 62 degrees will work. Where in this triangle, we can see we have an angle that is greater than 90, which makes sense from our cast rule, because from our cast rule, we know that for any ratio that's positive, we will have an angle between 0 and 90, which would be our 62 degrees, but we'll also have one between 90 and 180. So to get that, we will just go 180 minus 62, because 62 is our reference angle. And that gives us 118 degrees. Now to get angle Z, we only have two angles in each of our triangles. So we can just go 180 minus 29 minus 62. Which gives us 89 degrees. So that would be 89 degrees here. Where for other triangle, we have 180 minus 29 minus 118. Which gives us 33 degrees. We'll now solve for the last side. So we want side Z. I would probably also use y because that's the ones that we're given. So we have side length z over sine of angle z is equal to side length y over sine of y. Rearranging this gives us z is equal to y uh, sine of z over sine of y. Now if this equation can be used for both triangles, we'll just put different values in them. So for this first one, we have z is equal to y, which is 11, sine of angle y, which was 29, or sorry, of z, which was 89, divided by sine of 29. So this gives us 22.7. So this side here is 22.7. We'll do the same thing for this one. Like I said, we don't have to rearrange again. It is the same equation. It just, we have one different value. So we've got our Y hasn't changed. So 11 sine of Z, which will be 33. So that will be the main difference. Divide by sine of 29. So you have in sine of 33, divide by sine of 29, gives us 12.4. So on this triangle, this length here is 12.4. Okay, so we'll do another example. Solve the triangles where A, side length A is 15, B is 12, and angle B is 20.
Okay, so I have angle B, which is 20 degrees. Side length B is 12. And A is 15. That makes this angle A, and we'll call this C and C. Okay, so we will first determine how many triangles there are. So we'll calculate what sine of 20 is. And it gives us 0 0.34. Next, we'll do our opposite over adjacent. So our opposite was 12 divided by our adjacent of 15. which gives us 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is larger than 0 0.34, but still less than one. So we have two triangles. So once again, I will draw two triangles. And label them. Okay, so just like last time, I will start by solving for angle A. So I have sine of A over A is equal to, I have my values for B. So I've got sine of B over B. Rearranging that gives us sine of A is equal to side length A times sine of angle B divided by side length B. So that gives us sine of A is equal to 15 sine of 20 divided by 12. So that gives us sine of A is 0 0.4275. So A is equal to sine negative one of 0 0.4275, which gives us 25 degrees. So that matches angle on this one. To get our angle on this one, it'd be 180 minus 25. So that gives us 155 degrees. To get our last angle, we'll do 180 minus upper two angles. So 180 minus 20 minus 25. Which gives us 135 degrees. So angle C is 135 degrees. Just same thing on this one. So 180 minus 20 minus 155 gives us five degrees. So angle C on this one is five degrees. Now we wanna solve for side C. So that would be C over sine C is equal to, we'll use the values we're given. So we'll use B, so B over sine B. So rearranging that gives us C is equal to B sine of angle C divided by sine of angle B. And at this point, we can use this equation for both of these. We just change what our C value is. So we have C is equal to our B value of 12 sine of this first one. So 135 divided by sine of angle B, which is 20. So that gives us 
24.8. So this here is 24.8. We'll do the same thing with this one. So we have C is equal to 12 sine of angle C, which was five divided by sine of 20. And that gives us 3.1. Okay, so practice is on page 477, numbers 5, 6, 9, 14, and 15.